Hey, good morning, Mark Wharton here, Stormwater Professionals Group, with another segment of What Were They Thinking? Here we are today at a, I know it kind of look, may look like a junkyard. It's not, it's an auto body shop. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at some issues here with erosion. This one is, uh, is really not as much in the is in the execution in the create you know the, the the construction of the pond as it is the design. This is the design that I've seen several times. The whole idea here being to uh, eliminate inlets, but in this case, for some reason, they didn't. There's still plenty of inlets on the property, as you can see down here. There's a pipe that comes into the detention pond. There's a couple pipes in here. One of them's buried under all this trash, uh, but. The idea being that if you uh, if you use curb cuts, let me show you these curb cuts, they're all over the place. And so instead of using an inlet and grading to the inlet and then paying the water into the pond via uh, pipe, the idea is that when the water hits the ground, if we grade it to this area here, to this curb, and then put curb cuts in it, the water will just pay off into the pond through the curb cuts, eliminating the need for any uh, any inlets and any underground. So it's a lot cheaper that way. The problem is that it doesn't work. It's never worked. It's never gonna work because erosion, water is very erosive. And so if you take a look around here in the pond, you can see where the, uh, where the water is eroding away as it's coming down into the curb cuts, it's eroding away the slopes. Uh, it's very noticeable if you walk with me here we're gonna kind of walk down into the pond so I can show you the, uh, the worst of it. So down here you can see this is the real problem. This is what re happens in the real world. I call this the death of a thousand cuts. So water uh, or, the, or the, uh, the Grand Canyon effect. So you know the Grand Canyon, the way it was cut out is millions of years of just a steady stream of, of water, not a deluge, not a flood event, just a steady, constant stream. So what happens in this case is when it's raining, you get this steady stream of water that ultimately, if you come over here, I'll show you that ultimately this water, when it's low flow, when it, well, back up, when it's high flow, it's gonna just fall right over the side, right? But when it's low flows, the water's gonna come down here, it's gonna slide down this slope here, or this concrete, and it's gonna come underneath and start to erode out underneath the concrete. Ultimately, if this isn't corrected immediately, this concrete will be lost, it'll have to be re-poured. Uh, at least a majority of it will have to be cut out and re-poured and re-stabilized underneath this. This isn't an easy fix because of the way that the, the concrete was gr uh, graded. So in this kind of a situation, what you do is you grade this concrete dead flat. You wouldn't normally, if there was an inlet, say a curb inlet here, you'd start at the top, high sides up on top and kind of roll, bring the concrete down, bring the grade down to, a, uh, to an inlet. In this case, because it's flat, we want, we want every curb cut to collect the same amount of water. This is graded flat here with the slope coming from the top or the back of the property down to this, uh, down to these curb cuts. So I've done this before. I fixed a couple of these before. The best way to fix it really is in this case is to close off all the curb cuts and put an inlet in and then route that down to the bottom of the pond. This is much more, a much a cleaner approach. It's much more controlled. This leaves way too much, uh, it, it leaves way too much confusion on, that's not the word I'm looking for. This leaves way too much room for error, as you can see. If we turn around, you can see there's some other issues you know, same issue going on around the whole pond. And if we walk up here, I'll also show you that this pond has some issues with the grading. There's way too much dirt here in these areas. There's a pipe down here. It's way below the grade. So this whole bottom, come on over here. If you take a look at this, this whole bottom, I know there's a bunch of trash in here. That obviously is not supposed to be here, but this, this pipe and then this pipe are much, you can see they're much high, uh, lower than the surrounding grades. So this whole bottom will need, or this area here will need to be regraded so that we can drain it. You can see there's some, the, the water doesn't really dry up really well here, but it's not terrible. I think once we correct this, uh, these pipe issues, these grading issues here, the water will flow much better. Now on these over here, some of these smaller ones, I'm gonna take you over here and show you 
some of these smaller ones. And you can see that we have the same issue going on here, not quite as bad, but again, very difficult to correct because on this one, I really don't want to put a curb inlet here. These aren't terrible. They're not undercutting the concrete yet. So I think what we'll do on this one is we'll, we'll use a, a, a mat, a flexible mat, like, uh, like, or a flex and flow product, something that we can, uh, you know, bind, we can bind rocks together and kind of put some rocks in here. If we tried to just use like say three by five or pea gravel or something like that to try to contain that or slow that water flow down, they'll all just get washed into the pond. So the best approach if you're going to use small rock is to bind it together. There's a product called Flex and Flow that's very good at that. They use it in the North Sea to bind giant rocks together at the shoreline where they have extreme waves and erosion potential. So they're using this kind of product on that. I think it's a great candidate for this. Uh, you can also use a couple different flexible uh, concrete products, but uh, they may be a little more expensive and it, it's such a small space that using a big mat like that may, may be overkill. So uh, that's about all we got for this one. This is a very difficult one to correct. This is an engineering issue that uh, uh, possibly the, the owner pressured the engineer or the engineer just decided that this would be a much more economical approach, but in the long run, it's a disaster that's gonna to have to be corrected, and it's not easy to correct. This is one of the most difficult uh, situations to correct uh, in erosion and in, in slope stabilization. So uh, I'll give you some after pictures as soon as we're done with this, uh, show you what the corrections look like, and then maybe we'll revisit it in a year or so, and then show you that, you know, that, that it's a sustainable solutions, right? We're always looking for sustainable solutions. So if you need any help with your pond, you got a situation like this or any other situation, feel free to give us a holler. Uh, look us up on the web, stormwaterprofessionalsgroup.com. And again, this is Mark Wharton signing off. Thanks, see you next week.